Okay. Um, I'm Don to Spain, and uh, I have worked in Yellowstone Park uh, as a research biologist for uh, a number of years, and uh, recently been uh, switched over to the U.S. Geological Survey as the, in the Biological Resources Division. But I've uh, studied, I uh, trained as a plant ecologist, and uh, been fortunate enough to study in one of the finest, um, mostly intact ecosystems in the in the world. So, uh, Don, how do we use this notion of restoration to uh, establish or restore or renew um, our relationship with the land and the species and the people that inhabit it? Uh, well, I think we have to restore our relationship to the land on a personal level. It's something that we have to actively go and do. I'm not sure that um, teachers can help us. But they, can, they can help us, but they can't do it for us. We've got to learn about, become acquainted with, become a part of, uh, and understand a, an ecosystem. Um, and because, well, and, and this is a necessary thing for us to do because ecosystems are very powerful things. And they have the ability to eliminate us if we become too discordant. The, um, and on the other hand, um, they may also be strong enough to be able to withstand over the long, the long haul to withstand any of the deviations that we cause to them. And this is one of the things that um, that I think we have to be careful that we understand the process well enough to know when it is broken, when it is not working. Uh, it might be working against us because of something that we're doing, but it's working. And um, it's if we want to restore it, we've got to restore perhaps our position in relation to the ecosystem rather than making the ecosystem into something that uh, that we think it should be. You're an ecologist from Yellowstone. The obvious question, if you can address this briefly, is um, the uh, ecological role of uh, fire based on the experience, recent experience there. Um, yeah, that, well, that's been, a, that's been a revelation to me. Uh, and I have been looking at fire. Fire is one of the very strongest ecosystem uh, factors in 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 Yellowstone. It's um, it, it's it's basic. So I've been looking at fire for for twenty five thirty years, and trying to understand it in the context of of uh, ecosystem and and where it fits. Uh, and, and fire is both a participant, but it's also affected. It's, it's like an organism, but it's also like the abiotic part of the ecosystem. Um, it feeds on the products, the car fixed carbon of the ecosystem. And so it's involved in the energy web. Um, and uh, it also has a very strong influence on the ecosystem that shaped it and 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 uh, the species that are there have evolved with fire uh, and frequent fire so that um, it's just a fire is a part of the system and so when people there I maybe some other places it's not but I know when people start talking about restoring the fire after it's burned I think wait a minute there is nothing to restore there has been no damage. There has been no destruction of the ecosystem. The ecosystem has just been changed in one of its multi-dimensional vectors. And that's been, that vector then is time since it last burned. It's now a year, or in Yellowstone it's now 14 years or 15, I can't keep track, um, since it burned. Now, before the big fires of 1988, most of it had been 100 or 200 years or 300 years since it had burned. And now a lot of that, not all of it, but a lot of it is only five years after it's burned. That's not a destruction, that's just a change 
in one of the vectors in one of the time periods that, uh, that the system is going through. Um, you uh, mentioned that uh, we may be thinking about restoration wrong in the context of fire. Are there other ways that we might be misled with concepts or ways of thinking about restoration, things that you worry about when you hear that term, related terms? Uh, the, one of the things that I, th cautions that I would like to, to inject into the conversation perhaps is that um, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So let's find out if it's broke. Mm -hmm. Let's find out, let's try to understand the system well enough to know whether the system is broken or whether it's just not giving us the things that we want. Or if things have changed so much in the last hundred years that if we want the systems to behave the way they did a hundred years ago, we may be expecting more than, than we should from them. Because, um, well, climate change comes into, cl climate change is nothing new. Climate change has, has gone on for a long time. Um, and, and changes, well, last year is not like this year. And next year won't be like this year either. Um, and we've gone through a little ice age and European colonization of the West coincided with the change from the little ice age climate to the, if you want to call it the present climate. And we don't know very much about what that little ice age climate was in the Western United States anyway, because there were no rain gauges out here during that time. They came, they all came right after it happened. And so our rain gauges and our temperature gauges, our thermometers are all to a different climate than what happened 200 years ago. So if we want to restore something to the way it was 200 years ago, we may have to reinstitute the Little Ice Age climate. We don't know what it is. So there's so much we need to know that we need to exercise a lot of ecological humility. In this workshop here, we've attempted to bring the science and humanities together, artists and scientists, writers and scientists. Do you think that's important? Do you think that has real um, benefits? The intersection between the arts and, and the sciences, I think, is, is, um, is probably inevitable because in, I think in all of the sciences, the real scientists that I know, there is... Um, there is the emotion that the arts try to bring out or, or explain or try to transfer emotion that they have felt to you through poetry, through music, through the visual arts, uh, through being able to write good prose or, or, or a way of transferring emotions. And, uh, and I think the scientists all get emotionally involved with what they're studying but to, to a, maybe a greater or lesser degree. And uh, it's nice to be able to see people that are capable of expressing that emotion and then explain enough to them about the system that they get excited or that they have emotional attachment uh, to, to things. So, and, and they are capable of transferring that mm -hmm. to other people. And through that transfer, we'll begin to put this alchemy of this combination into practice yeah, yeah. the <laughs> yeah the, the, the combination of these things I'm not sure I'm capable I'm pretty sure I'm not capable of being able to transfer the emotion that I feel as we walk through an old growth forest here or as I walk through a freshly burned forest in Yellowstone Park and marvel at the way the system's put together and the way the system is reacting to these different situations, these different combinations of various interacting factors, uh, to, to feel the magnificence of these things. And to, and again, the old growth forest that we see here, a 500 year old Douglas fir, which grew following a fire 500 years ago. And, and the, the freshly burned lodgepole pine forest or spruce and fir forest in Yellowstone National Park 
and, and to realize all of the different nuances and the different places we are in, in this interacting hyperspace or ecological space with so many vectors that uh, the marvelous, the, the, the world is really a marvelous place. How do I, you know, I'm not a poet. <laughs> I can show this emotion in, in my face or in my gestures. You, you go to a freshly burned area and, uh, and do you look at it with a broken heart? Oh, not in the least. The, the freshly burned areas, uh, I see uh, the seeds that are in the ground, the rhizomes that are preserved because the fire, the physics of the fire is that heat rises. So when, when these big mushroom clouds are being created by the burning of the forest, the release of a lot of energy in a very short period of time, um, first of all, is a marvel in itself. Just, just to stand back and see that. And in 1988, I got to see that a lot, a lot more than I thought I ever would. Um, that in itself is a marvelous um, event, natural event that's going on. It's like the building of a thundercloud, but it has some other things and some other causes and some other things that are going on. The physics of heat transfer through wood determining which wood burns and which doesn't. The physics of water being evaporated from, having to be evaporated from a fuel before the fuel can be consumed is, determines whether or not some things burn and how much of which burns, which fuel components in the system burns, and, and uh, how much of the ash is created. And, and there's so many of those things going on, as well as the biological things. The seed bank, the, the, in, in lodgepole pine, for instance, the seeds that are in the, in the crowns of the trees, even though these trees are being incinerated at 1,000 degrees centigrade, the, the seeds are protected in their cones for the amount of time that that crown is burning. And it's, it's all interconnected and well adapted, and then that seed is dispersed out onto that ground after it's cooled off, and the seeds are black, so the birds don't see them, and the mice don't see them, and the lodgepole is, is adapted to re actually require the removal of all that organic matter on top of the soil. And just the way all of these things interact with each other, yeah, I find it a, a marvelous experience to do that. But then I spent a long time learning about the whole thing and, and uh, maybe know more about it than a lot of people do. And you're looking uh, finally for your recommended readings, things that uh, works, written works, poems, songs, images, websites, just well, briefly, and there'll be an opportunity later to add to that. Yeah. Do you want me to yeah, state go ahead them and here? Yeah, them right on the thing and I'm going to take your picture. Um, well, there's a lot of things that, the, that I haven't written, and um, I do have a book on the vegetation of Yellowstone National Park, which I have tried to include a lot of these things and bring as many of these threads together and, and how the vegetation is interacting with all of these. And um, so that's, that's a book. It's getting close to being out of print. There are some... Um, proceedings in, in uh, science conferences and that sort of thing that, that I have uh, that are available. Uh, works of others you recommend? Um, ooh. Things that have really opened your eyes or inspired your thinking. Oh. <laughs> I have to think on that some. There are there are a number of other uh, people who have been working in fire. Uh, Bill Romney, uh, who's presently at the Colorado State University, uh, has done a lot of um, fire and fire ecology. Jan van Wagdendonk at um, Yosemite National Park uh, is another name that uh, that I've been in, able to interact with, and. Um, Oh, 
there's a Forest Service supervisor whose name won't come to me right now. I know who you mean. <laughs> I'm having trouble with his name too. He's the guy he, that got booted out. And yeah. Showed a lot of courage. from the Canyon Ferry Dam. Ooh. He helped me a lot. Dan? Daniels? Daniels. He helped me a lot after the 1988 fires because we would get together and he would tell me, Despain, you're on the right track. Stay with it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that gave me a lot of, of support just, just to have him, um, yeah just to have him to, to commiserate with. And he knew what I'd gone through because he'd gone through some of the same things. He'd made recommendations, and then the fire just, fire weather just kept going. It didn't stop the way it always had. And, and uh, we, we both took a lot of heat. So, I mean, as in terms of, of writings or that sort of thing, that's... Yeah, part of my problem is in, in, in Yellowstone National Park, I was the only plant ecologist. And I had contact with, of course, other universities periodically, but I was striking out there a lot on my own. <laughs>